Well, we hear a lot about censorship of the writer on TV. We oh, heard a good deal about it in your own case, especially. Well, depending, of course, on the thematic treatment you're using, if you have the temerity to try to dramatize a theme that involves any particular social controversy currently extant, then you're in deep trouble. For instance? Uh, a racial theme, for example. My the case in point, I think, uh, a show I did for the Steel Hour some years ago, three years ago, called Noon on Doomsday, yeah. which was uh, a story which purported to tell what was the aftermath, the alleged kidnapping in Mississippi of the Till Boy, yeah. the young Chicago Negro. And I wrote the script using black and white uh, initially. Then it was changed uh, to suggest an unnamed foreigner. Then the locale was moved from the south to, the, to New England. And I'm convinced they'd have gone up to Alaska or the North Pole if, and using Eskimos as a possible minority, except I suppose the costume problem was of sufficient severity not to attempt it. But it became a lukewarm, vitiated, emasculated kind of show. You went along with it, though? All the way. I protested. I went down fighting, as most television writers do, yeah. thinking in a strange, oblique, philosophical way that better say something than nothing. Yeah. In this particular show, though, by the time they had finished taking Coca-Cola bottles off the set because these sponsor claimed that this had southern connotations, suggesting to what depth they went to make this a clean antiseptically, rigidly uh, acceptable show. Uh, why, it bore no relationship at all to what we had purported to say in initially. Patty Chayefsky has talked about the insidious influence of what he calls pre-censorship. How does that work? Uh, pre-censorship is a practice, I think, of most television writers. I can't speak for all of them. This is the prior knowledge of the writer of those areas which are difficult to try to get through. And so a writer will shy away from writing those things which he knows he's going to have trouble with on a sponsorial or an agency level. We practice it all the time. We just do not write those themes which, you know are which we know are going to get into trouble. Who's the culprit? Is it the network, the sponsor? It sure is not the FCC. No, it's certainly not the FCC, ideally speaking, of course. It's a combination of culprits in this case, Mike. It's partly network. It's principally agency and sponsor. In many ways, I think it's the audience themselves. How do you mean? Well, I'll give you an example. About a year ago, roughly 11 or 12 months ago, on the Lassie show, this is a story usually told by Sheldon Leonard, who was then associated with the show. Lassie was having puppies. And I have two little girls, then aged five and three, who are greatly enamored of this beautiful collie. Mm -hmm. And they watched the show with great interest. And Lassie gave birth to puppies. And Mike, it was probably one of the most tasteful and delightful and warm things uh, depicting what is this, this, this wondrous thing that is birth. And after the show, I, I think there were many congratulations all around because it was a lovely show. The sort of thing I'd love my kids to watch to show them what is the birth process and how marvelous it is. They got many, many cards and letters. Sample card from the Deep South, this was. If I wanted my kids to watch sex shows, I wouldn't have had them turn on that. I could take them to burlesque shows. And as a result of the influx of mail, many of the cards, incidentally, as Sheldon tells it, were postmarked at identical moments, all in the same handwriting, but each was counted as a singular piece of mail. And as a result, the directive went down that there would be no shows having anything to do with puppies, that is, in the actual birth process. Well, obviously, it is this wild, lunatic fringe of letter writers that, that greatly affect what the sponsor has in mind. You can understand the position of the sponsor, can't I, you? In, in many ways, I suppose I can. He's there to push a product. He has a considerable stake, thus, in what goes on the air. Most assuredly. And in those cases uh, where, we, where, there, where there is a, a problem of, of, of public taste, in which there is a concern for... for uh, eliciting negative response from a large mass of people. I can understand why the guys are frightened. Sure. I don't understand, Mike, for example, other evidences and instances of, of intrusion by sponsors. For example, on Playhouse 90, not a year ago, a lovely show called Judgment at Nuremberg. Uh, I think probably one of the most competently done and artistically done pieces that 90's done all year. In it, as you recall, uh, mention was made of gas chambers. Yeah. And the line was deleted, cut off the cut off the, cut off the uh, soundtrack. And uh, it, it mattered little to these guys that the gas involved in 
concentration camps with cyanide, which bore no resemblance, physical or otherwise, to, to the gas used in stove, they cut the line. Because the sponsor was... He did not want that awful association made between what was the horror and the misery of Nazi Germany with the nice chrome, wonderfully antiseptically clean, beautiful kitchen appliances that they were selling. Now, this is an, is an example of sponsor interference, which is so beyond logic and which is so beyond taste. This I rebel against.